everybody, the Friends of Israel Today is a unique radio show that teaches biblical truth for changing times. We do this through Q&A, timely interviews, dramatic readings from the life of Holocaust survivor Zvi Kalisher, and of course, Bible teaching. To learn more, visit foiradio.org. 11.32 Sunday mornings on KKVB Las Vegas. Parents, did you know almost 90% of teens surveyed said it would be easier to abstain from sexual activity and avoid pregnancy if they had more open, honest conversations with their parents? Don't feel discouraged. If you have yet to begin this conversation, the best time to start talking is now. So parents, talk to your teens early and often about delaying sexual activity and having healthy relationships. In 2015, 40% of high school students in Nevada reported having sex at least once. Abstinence is the only 100% effective way to avoid pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections. Parents, talk to your teens. They're listening. For more information on how to talk to your teens about healthy relationships, delaying sexual activity, and available programs, go to dpbh.nv.gov. That's dpbh.nv.gov. This message sponsored by the Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health and aired in cooperation with the Nevada Broadcasters Association and this station. Join us for Vegas Revival, the new radio ministry of the Gospel at House Church that is heard on this station every Sunday at 4.30 to 5 p.m. We hope you can join us as we all work together to encourage Christian revival in the greater Las Vegas area. We look forward to being with you then. God bless you all. Yeah, let me tell you why you should listen to KKVV. It helps to enlighten you spiritually. There's deep programs that will enrich your life and deepen your relationship with God. I encourage you to tune in all the time and listen to KKVV Las Vegas because it will build you up and get you closer to God. God bless you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. KKVV Las Vegas. The way you get your medicine prescriptions is now changing across America. GoGoMeds.com can deliver your medicine right to your door. Here's all you need to do. Your doctor gives you the prescription. You go online to GoGoMeds.com. Once you fill in your information, it's in the system. Your prescription is delivered. You've saved money. It's that easy. No more waiting, no lines, no copay each month, and best of all, no wandering around the pharmacy aimlessly waiting for your prescription to be filled. GoGoMeds.com, the new way you get your medicine delivered right to your door. Remember that getting your prescription filled now means never having to go to a pharmacy again. GoGoMeds.com, GoGoMeds.com. Get all your medicine prescriptions in the mail. Lower prices, avoid copays at gogomeds.com. That's G O G O M E D S.com. Do it now. Gogomeds.com. Red Sky Radio, Saturdays with Rob Walter at 7.02 a.m. In Matthew 16, verses 2 through 3, Jesus said, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Red Sky Radio, Saturdays with Rob Walter at 7.02 a.m. Right here on KKVB Las Vegas. The invitation to you to listen to Real Talk Power Talk Radio. My name is Otis Wells, and my wife's name is Monique Wells. And the purpose of this show is to restore the lives of the people with the Word of God. We love to teach on the kingdom. The kingdom is to think kingdom, live kingdom, and become kingdom. Listen to us, Real Talk Power Talk Radio, on KKBB Las Vegas on Sunday at 1:02 p.m. God bless you. The views, opinions, and conclusions expressed in the upcoming program are those of the participants and program owners and not necessarily those of Las Vegas Broadcasters Incorporated or its employees, management, or owners. Thank you, Craig, and welcome, my friends. Happy New Year. We haven't gotten there yet, but we're, uh, we're close. 
My name is Tim Barons. The name of the program is Jesus and Tim in Las Vegas. My grateful thanks to Brandon this past year for putting the program up on Jesus and Tim, Jesus, A-N-D, Tim dot T-K. He's had some computer problems, but he's doing the best he can, and I sure appreciate all the hard, hard work he's been doing. I want to say hello to all the fellows from SOPA, Street Preachers and Open Air Preachers of America, uh, Reuben Israel. Uh, we want to get him on here uh, in the next couple of weeks to report on what's going to be happening tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, here in Las Vegas, and uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully uh, book that with uh, with him here this coming week or so. Uh, I was with him yesterday and the others, and uh, had a chance to share. I believe that'll be up on YouTube. He said it's on his Facebook page. Uh, where I was able to share for about 20, 26 minutes on the, on the ministry and what the Lord has done through us. Uh, Dan Fox, who helps me hand out tracks, I help him. Uh, he was able to share. He did a phenomenal job. In fact, I think it was a lot better than mine. But anyway, but God used me too. Uh, God, you know, uses all, us all. But uh, have you ever done that where you're hearing something? Boy, he's a lot better than I am. <laughs> so, Hey, I have a big request, and if you could just pray and, and maybe help out. A friend of mine, a street preacher, he's helped me hand out tracks uh, with Robert Rice and others. And his name is Huey David. He is in danger of being booted out of his apartment. I put this on Facebook, and Glenn uh, helped out with a $100 money order. received that today, made out to... Uh, where he is uh, renting, and then uh, another brother in New York City uh, helped out with $50, but we're about $800 short. And I'm going to give you his number. His name is Huey David, and his phone number is 702-752-2893. He used to be a security guard and got fired for grabbing the guy's arm as he was walking out the door. I mean, today, I mean, just it's... It's crazy, some of these uh, these laws, and he, of course, regrets doing it. But uh, if you could pray that he'll be able to find another job, and also if you could pray that that need will be met, because he's uh, Tuesday, he's going to get the boot if he doesn't uh, come up with that $800. Here's, phone, here's his phone number again, 702-752-2893, 702-752-2893. Lord, we just pray that that need will be met. And Huey and his mom will be able to stay there, and he'll be able to get a, a nice job that will pay him well, Father. Thank you so much. Well, it's uh, my privilege to be talking to Dale Ratzlaff, and I was watching uh, or uh, listening to uh, an interview. In fact, we played it with uh, him and Tom McMahon uh, from BrianCall.org. Um, uh, Dale's a, a former Seventh-day Adventist pastor, trained in Seventh-day Adventist schools and seminaries. Uh, he's the author of numerous articles and books addressing Adventist doctrines, including Cultic Doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventism and Sabbath in Christ. And uh, it's good to have you, Dale. Thank you for joining us. Well, I'm happy to join you. Okay. Why, uh, why are we getting the feedback there? On... What's happening? Can we... Hold on a sec, Dale. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you okay. Okay. Do you have the radio on or anything? No. Okay. Um, I have a computer not too far away. I'm sitting on my computer. Um, um, why are we getting the feedback? I have no idea. Are you still getting it? Uh, not as, no, not the feedback now. I, I just... I don't know. <laughs> no, no, now it's way. We now I, I'm way up here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you're sounding a lot better. It's me that's overpowering you now. Okay. Okay. Wow. Uh, I think that's a your. Is that our end? Can he call? Can he call back? Can you call back, Dale? Uh, you want me to call back on my cell phone? Um, should he call back on his cell phone? Yeah, yeah, that go ahead. Go. Usually is a little better uh, line. Okay, all right, let's let's do that. Okay, okay Dale Ratzlaff, uh, former Seventh Day Adventist pastor, and uh, one of the things I want to ask him is when he was in this interview with um, Dale um, Tom McMahon, he talked about a wing of the Seventh Day Adventist Hospital in Glendale, California, 
being dedicated to a Seventh-day Adventist abortionist. Uh, do the Seventh-day Adventists favor abortion? I want to ask them that. And, uh, whew, oh, I, I was stunned when I heard that. Uh, but uh, uh, be praying for the, uh, the stars that are uh, here in Las Vegas who are receiving a copy of Jack McElroy's book, How I Lost My Fear of Death and How You Can Too. <clears throat> and this is a great book that deals with different religions and things of this nature. And uh, But all right, let's try it again. Are you there, Dale? I'm here. Oh, that's, that's a lot better. Now, why am I so loud? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> all right. Um, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna change mics here, Brian. Brian, I'm tra changing mics. Testing one two. Testing one two. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Did you invite Murphy to come along too? Well, I was about ready to do my impersonation of that guy from Cool Hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate, but I won't do that. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> Dale, uh, one of the things I mentioned uh, when I heard that interview with uh, Tom McMahon of Brian Call, by the way, if people want to hear that, uh, how could they hear that? The, well, I don't I don't have that. I guess you have that. Okay. You'll have to give them the uh, source. Right. Uh, I think it's BrianCall.org. But one of the things that jumped out at me is that you had mentioned that uh, at the Seventh-day Adventist Hospital in Glendale, California, they have a wing d dedicated to a Seventh-day Adventist abortionist. How is that possible? Uh, it, well, it's, it's, it's not necessarily in the hospital. It's with the university, and uh, they do. They named it after him for his entrepreneurship, and uh, that's quite a story. I, I didn't come prepared to give you all the details, but I'll tell you what I know. He apparently uh, personally aborted uh, 250,000 babies, and he said he wished he could have doubled that or tripled it. Uh, and at one time, he, in fact, he's the one that developed I don't know what it is. I'm not an abortion doctor or know anything about it, but he developed what they call a uh, assembly line abortion system. And, uh, and he did a lot of abortion. He had abortion clinics all over the country. Um, and the school named a, a building after him for his entrepreneurship. Wow. What, what, what do the Seventh-day Adventists believe about abortion? Well, it's, it, it all goes back to their theologies. They don't believe that the person, ha the person has a human spirit. They believe that when it says spirit, it means breath. And you know there's the same words in both Hebrew and Greek. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they have... Uh, the Spirit mentioned it's basically breath. So they go back to Genesis 2 where it says, And God created man of the dust of the earth and breathed in his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. So they define soul then as body plus breath. So if the baby is not breathing, there is no soul. So when the Bible talks about uh, Jesus... Uh, or John the Baptist leaping in Elizabeth's womb when Mary came on the scene, they don't believe that's a baby? Well, well they do. See, the, the thing is, in Adventism, there are so many conflicting, confusing ideas and thoughts. Um, it, it's just amazing. And the further I got away from Adventism after I left it, the more and the more I saw of the uh, discrepancies between uh, their official beliefs and the Word of God. Well, give us a brief history of Seventh-day Adventism. Well, a real brief one. It, it started with William Miller, who, uh, with some other people, predicted that Christ would come October 22, 1844. And the prediction was that he was going to come to Earth. Um, and uh, I don't, if you want to, I can go into October 22, but that would be quite extensive in time. Anyway, obviously he didn't come, so they were very, very upset. People were really believed that he was coming. I mean, it's a tremendous uh, quote revival in in foolishness. But the next day, a couple of the believers that uh, started or, or were influential and started the Adventist Church, they slept in the barn that night. And the next morning, they were walking across a cornfield, and Hiram Edson was uh, he was halfway across 
the field and he said suddenly he realized that instead of Christ coming to earth, Christ had entered uh, from one uh, place of the sanctuary into another. And they said that Moses built the sanctuary after the pattern that God showed him, and there's a holy and a most holy place. And so they said that instead of Christ coming to earth, uh, Christ moved from the holy place into the most holy place for the first time um, to begin a work of investigative judgment, which was to, um, to investigate all the people who claimed to be uh, God worshipers or Christians uh, to see if they uh, had any unconfessed sins. And if they did, they didn't qualify in the judgment. Uh, it's a very, very demonic uh, doctrine. And the book Cultic, and Cultic Doctrine really uh, spells that out good. I've got over 600, I think it's close to 700 footnotes from Adventist sources in it. Why do you use the word cult? Yeah, I didn't say cult, I said cultic. Oh, okay. Uh, however, I do believe that traditional Adventism definitely qualifies as a cult. But today it is, uh, it's multifaceted. There are some who are very traditionalist and would argue for all of the, uh, the stringent, uh, cultic-ness of the Adventist Church. There are others who are very gospel-centered and others who are very liberal, uh, very, very liberal, almost, uh, almost like the emerging church. So it, it varies depending on where you are and, and so on. Well, what, what can you tell us about Ellen G. White, uh, the founder of Adventism, her, her writings and, and the great controversy? Okay, uh, Ellen White uh, was one of the followers of Miller. She was only a teenager. And uh, by the way, her, her, let me see, her cousin was one of Joseph Smith's multiple wives. And there are some similarities in her writings to that of Joseph Smith. But anyway, when she was a, a schoolgirl, I think about 10 or 11, 12, something like that, she was hit in the head with a stone. Uh, another student threw a rock and hit her right in the head, and she was unconscious for two weeks. And uh, some think that she had a brain injury, and others think, others think that she had uh, a type of, uh, of epilepsy. Um, and I've even had uh, neurologists write me a letter and say they know that's what she had, but, but she's not here for them to examine. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, she started having visions, and they claimed that uh, she didn't breathe during the visions, and she would uh, supposedly have supernatural strength, um, and she had an angel that would often show up in these visions and speak to her. They claimed she had like 2,000 visions. And throughout her writings, she will often say, my accompanying angel said this, and we've caught the accompanying angel telling lies several times. So, um, <laughs> well, the, the verse that comes to me at, when you share that is, if I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than what's been preached to you, let him be accursed, Paul writes uh, in Galatians 1. Yeah, right. Uh, how, why did you leave Adventism? What was it that brought you up? Well, I finally discovered the gospel, and it actually wasn't from Adventist sources, but I was teaching Revelation, uh, I'm sorry, Romans. Uh, I was teaching uh, Bible doctrines at the Monterey Bay Academy in, in uh, near Ruffinville, California, south of San Jose, south of San Francisco. And I took my Bible doctrines class every year through the first eight chapters, and you can't do that without understanding the gospel. And then uh, there was quite a, a stir, I won't go into details, with Desmond Ford and, and some other people who were showing their investigative judgment was wrong. And I had to, uh, I shared some of the research with people that didn't like me to share it, and I finally got called in by the conference president. I had to promise to teach all the 27 doctoral points. They have 28 now, but there are 27 then. And I told them, I can't preach the investigative judgment unless you can show me how to do it from Scripture. Well, they couldn't. I met with the chairman of the Department of Religion at Loma Linda University. I had a five-hour uh, meeting with him with a couple of the elders of the church that I was pastoring. And in private, he basically admitted this. It, it's wrong. But he says, can't you uh, just tell the conference president that uh, you're going to be loyal? And, he, and then he said, praise your... your uh, answers such that you can be loyal to your own belief, but help him to believe that you're loyal to the church. 
in other words, uh, kind of tell a little white lie or a black lie, whatever yeah, you want to call it. Yeah. Anyway, it came to the place I had to resign or be fired, and they said, I'd give me some severance pay if I resigned, so I resigned. If Seventh-day Adventists, uh, we're talking with uh, Dale Ratzlaff, a former Seventh-day Adventist pastor. By the way, before we go any further, give us your website, if you would, Dale. Okay, I'll give you two websites, and you can get to both of them uh, through one. It's easier, uh, without spelling my name, go to Life Assurance Ministries. That's plural, lifeassuranceministries.com. And, and if you click on articles, there's a ton of articles and even some books that are out of print under articles. If you go to bookstore, that will lead you to another site where we have all of our books for sale. Okay. And if you go to lifeassuranceministries.org, you'll find Proclamation, our, uh, our journal that goes out to about 30,000 people, at least it used to, yeah. uh, free. I, I receive that. That has some excellent testimonies of former Seventh-day Adventists in that, and uh, that's 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 something that everybody you do ought to uh, to get. Lifeassuranceministries.com. Um, if Seventh-day Adventist pastors had to choose between the writings of Ellen G. White or the Bible, which would they go for? It depends on which one again. Uh, many Adventist pastors only mouth Ellen White occasionally, so they won't be criticized. And many of them don't believe in her anymore. Some do uh, in, in various ways. And it's kind of interesting. Um, in the Southern California area, a person can get by without supporting some of the cultic aspects of Adventism. However, overseas where they're growing rapidly, uh, for example, Ethiopia, uh, there was a pastor there who was teaching a what they call Sabbath school class, and he taught from the Book of Romans, and they understood the gospel. And so he started teaching Christ and Christ alone for salvation, and they kicked him out. Huh. Well, uh, and he was a Ph.D. and he uh, was working for the translators over there uh, to translate the Bible into their local language, and he put out a paper to make a long story short. Eighty-seven. Adventist churches have left the denomination, and it represents 12,000 people. So over there, you've got to toe the line. You've got to preach the Sabbath, you've got to preach Ellen White, and you've got to preach the Bremen Church, or you're out. What do you, and, say, what do you say to people who say, well, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy is one of the Ten Commandments? Well, it is, but, um, and, okay, here's the question. Is it moral or is it ritual? That's the key question. And they would say, well, it's, uh, most people will say, well, it's moral because it's tied in with the Ten Commandments and the other nine are moral. But they, they fail to recognize that the Sabbath is associated 12 times with ritual laws. And in Near East Treaty documents, it was seen, uh, like the Hittites, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the ruling party and the rule party would have a covenant, and the sign of the covenant was always in the center of the document. And if you take the Ten Commandments in Hebrew and start counting back from both ends, the front and the back, the center phrase is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Sabbath is a sign of the Sinaitic covenant made only with Israel. And if you go to Exodus 31 and so on, you'll see that it's a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the sign of the covenant. Uh, circumcision was the entrance sign. Sabbath was the repeating, uh, repeatable sign. Huh. And if you broke the Sabbath, you would be cast out of Israel and uh, stoned. Yeah, I know. I know nine of the Ten Commandments are repeated in the New Testament, but uh, remember the Sabbath day is not. And the early disciples met on the first day of the week. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there's very good evidence that Jesus broke the Sabbath in uh, in John five. You know, at the pool of Bethesda. You know, he picked told the guy to pick up his uh, pallet and walk, and that was a you know a, a, a probably a heavy bedroll, mm -hmm. and that was prohibited in the Old Testament. Right. And uh, and then if you read carefully, it says he not only broke the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own Father. Mm. Yeah. And they're both true. They're both right. true. Absolutely. Well, uh, what's been really deceptive is when we get this stuff in the mail about these prophecy seminars, and you go, and they're interesting, but not a word is said about the Seventh-day Adventist Church until the last day. 
And that's when Mr. Bradshaw brings that up. Uh, up. Uh, isn't it interesting, or rather ironic, that as an organization that has so many failed prophecies, that uh, they'd make such a deal over prophecy? What's your, what's your take on that? Well, it's, they have honed that down. Uh, it's very persuasive. Um, if you've ever, you have you been to one yes, of those? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You will find that the first several seem right on. They'll even preach, sounds like they're preaching the straight gospel and everything. And then suddenly they go to Daniel, you'll see the beast up there and so on. And then they'll finally get to Revelation where, uh, and the final church will keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And the commandments of God are said to be the Ten Commandments. The faith of Jesus is Ellen White. And they're the, the true remnant church, they say. So it's very deceptive, and that deception started from Ellen White's, um, uh, well, I say, counsel. She told people when you go to new areas, you don't push forward the Sabbath and some of the things that uh, separate us. First, you get to know them, and, and then you say these later, as they call the testing truths. So they know when they go into an area how many uh, flyers they have to send out. But the thing is, in the U.S. now, uh, they will baptize many people in these um, revelation seminars. They call them all different names, but basically that's what it is. But they leave quite uh, rapidly. Very few of them stay. As soon as they find out about Ellen White and some of the uh, cultic doctrines, uh, they will leave. Now, uh, explain the doctrine. We only have about four minutes left here, but explain the doctrine of soul sleep and, and what the uh, Seventh-day Adventists go to as biblical support for, for that. Well, they go to, uh, oh, let's see, <laughs> um, uh, I draw a blank here, I'm 81, I guess I'm uh, uh, made okay to draw a blank now and then, but uh, Ecclesiastes, I think it's 5-9, it says, the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. I neither have they a, a reward anymore under the sun, so on. And his son come to honor him, and they know it not. Uh, and so they take that verse as a key verse. But if you read the context, uh, the author is very, very discouraged. He's saying there's no difference between the, 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 the good and the bad and so on. And that's not the place to find theology. Uh, you know, that's during the time that Solomon was almost a, uh, almost a pagan with his 700 wives and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not the place to find um you know, theology. Then they go on to find that the uh, the breath leaves, okay? And they will go to nth degree to not allow anybody to go to heaven, you know, when they die. <laughs> uh. Well, lifeassuranceministries.com is the website. Lifeassuranceministries.com. And uh, make sure you get that magazine. Uh, uh, the name yeah. of yeah, go to lifeassuranceministries.org for the magazine. I see. Okay. But uh, lifeassuranceministries.com is the regular website. Yeah, that's my site that has the articles, and then if you click on bookstore, it'll take you over to the books. Very good. Dale Ratzlaff, uh, people need to know about this. Can a person be a born-again Christian and remain in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Uh, I, I'm sure, in fact, I know I just had a communication with a former pastor friend of mine. I'm sure he is a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. The problem comes, uh, well, even though they don't believe some of the cultic things of Adventism, they're still supporting them. Right, right. So they're, they're conflicted. I mean, it's... Um, yeah. Well, Dale, we have to run, but uh, let's have folks go to that wonderful website of yours, lifeassuranceministries.com or lifeassuranceministries.org. Dale Ratzlaff, former Seventh-day Adventist pastor, and uh, he's, he's, boy, sh shooting from the hip. He, he's telling it like it is. Thank you so much, Dale, for being with us. All right. God bless, God bless you, brother. Bye-bye. All right. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy New Year. Pray that the religion of peace won't pull anything here in Vegas uh, tomorrow night uh, here or uh, uh, in New York City. Uh, and just pray for folks 
in, in back east who are suffering with a that snow. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. But uh, if you can help out my friend Huey David, 702-752-2893, 752-2893. Uh, he's about ready to be evicted on Tuesday. If yeah, it sure appreciate it. And of course, we appreciate your help and support too. Tim Barons, I'm on Facebook. The only Facebook page I use is where I'm giving Hillary a track. Okay, it's paper cut out, but uh, uh, that's the one I use. B E R E N D S. My address: Post Office Box 24091, 24091, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89101. 89101. Pray for us tonight. The Street Preachers of America and I and Dan Fox will be around the Bellagio handing out gospel tracks and preaching. Would appreciate your prayers that many souls will be saved. God bless you, my friend. Live for the Lord. Bring home all A's. And remember, 1 Corinthians 15 58. I'll let you look it up. Bye bye. Sunshine Gospel Hour and Sister Viola Earl invite you to listen Sunday mornings at 7.30 for the blessed word of God and anointed gospel music to get your Sunday going. Anointed music and the blessed word of God on the Sunshine Gospel Hour. The Sunshine Gospel Hour is Sunday mornings at 7.30 here on KKVV Best News Radio. Friends, this is Hank Hanegraaff. Your support for the Bible Answer Men broadcast on KKVV is more important now than ever before. It's only by your faithful support that the Bible Instrument broadcast can stay on KKVV. Make a difference in the lives of people. So thank you for standing with the Bible Instrument broadcast right here on KKVV.